Hi there, so this is the second video in the series of the Erythrina uh, study page uh, for my botanical diary uh, in April. And if you haven't watched the first video, you can uh, watch it uh, following the link uh, you can find here. And uh, basically the first video is uh, all about the color mixing for this plant. And uh, if you're not already uh, sus subscribing to my channel, uh, I advise you to subscribe if you want to uh, be notified of the next videos in the series. All right, so in this video, I'm showing you how to transfer your uh, sketches uh, from uh, another pad somewhere else to your sketchbook. And uh, with this method, I uh, draw the sketch, the, whatever it is that you're drawing, on the uh, tracing paper and then I turn it around and I retrace uh, the entire drawing with a soft pencil. So this one, uh, if I remember well, it was a, a 2B. So you just uh, redraw it and the soft pencil will help you uh, transfer uh, this uh, drawing a little bit better. So uh, if it's a hard pencil, you won't have you know, the same results and uh, retrace the entire drawing carefully. Uh, just the drawing, I don't do the shading like some people do. Uh, so once uh, I've done that, I turn it uh, around again, so to the right side, and that's why I write RS uh, on the right side, so I remember which one it is. And uh, I use this tool, which is uh, is called an agate burnisher, and um, so just basically um, rub it uh, all over your uh, drawing and this will transfer the line that is at the back uh, of, uh, of the drawing, the one that I just did. And uh, this way you have quite a clean uh, transfer and uh, you don't have to you know, use carbon paper which is quite dark and you can just lift uh, these pencil lines, uh, so make it really faint. So it is quite faint already. Uh, hopefully you can see it. And I keep checking it, I keep lifting the page just to see if it's transferring properly. Uh, but this method, I quite like it because you can't really use a light box uh, when you have a, um, you know, a sketchbook like this. So I'm transferring the smaller um, uh, drawing as well, uh, which is uh, the flower one is just got like the, the little flower buds and it's the same thing so just rub all around where the lines are and just make sure that you're transferring everything and uh, and that's it you have your uh, drawing in your sketchbook so it's uh, pretty simple uh, to do and uh, quite clean And uh, in here, I'm just uh, transferring also a drawing of the stamens, uh, which are three times uh, bigger than uh, life size, basically. And then uh, I will uh, always uh, label everything. So that was the vexillary stamen. And then uh, just uh, to make sure that I know what everything is. So as you can see, it transfers uh, pretty well. And then as usual, I find some information and I just uh, jot down a few uh, things about the plant. So here I'm just writing that the Erythrina genus contains over 130 species. And its name derives from the Greek uh, erythros, uh, which means red, uh, because the flowers are uh, red and uh, it's also called uh, coral tree for this reason um, because the flowers are the some of the flowers are the color of the coral <laughs> and um, the leaves uh, for this plant are compound so they are made up of three leaflets and uh, as I was saying in the previous uh, uh, video the flowers are made up of one petal which is um, uh, the, the main one is called a standard and is curving back and exposes the stamens. And then there is a keel and two wings. 
and on in the larger branches uh, and the trunk there are intermittent thorns so it's um, they are quite sharp uh, especially in the younger um, uh, branches so you have to be very careful if you um, find one of these trees and uh, you touch it and uh, one thing uh, interesting that I found is that erythrina has been used in uh, folk medicine uh, for uh, a long time to treat insomnia and malaria and uh, toothaches and, and so on. And even nowadays, it's uh, very interesting uh, as a, um, you know, from a, a medical point of view because yeah, it has lots of interesting compounds uh, that are, are being studied uh, to help in uh, modern uh, medicine. So I thought that was uh, quite interesting. And uh, in here, I'm just uh, using uh, ink to uh, go over the, the pencil lines that I did before. So it's uh, a little bit more um, uh, durable. You know, I like to use different medias in, uh, uh, in my uh, pages, in my sketchbook pages. So, it, because it's also a way to experiment as well and have a little play. So I use ink and I use watercolor. And uh, in this case, I use uh, color pencils as well, which you will see uh, later on. I will use them for the standard petal. And uh, in here, I'm just using uh, these little dots to sort of give the idea of where the, uh, the shadows are. So, and I changed the pen because I was using a 003, but I found it a bit too uh, fine, too small. So I changed it and uh, I'm using here 0 0.1. And this pen I'm using is a Micron. Uh, these are my favorite uh, ink pens to use. So they're called Pigma Micron. Uh, they're quite, um, they're good and they are archival and they don't um, bleed when you apply watercolor. So you can apply watercolor uh, once it's dry. And in here, I'm just using watercolor for the flower bud. So it's not as, um, you know, precise as when I do my final painting. But uh, I like to take uh, a quick sketch of uh, the different colors so I have an idea, you know, of what it looks like uh, as well. So I don't have just black and white. And I quite like to have a, a colorful um, uh, sketchbook <laughs> as well. So here I'm just using a very small um, brush to do the little veins that you can see in the flower petals. And uh, on this side, I'm just um, applying a little bit of color to the keel as well, so that um, I have an idea of what this looks like. I mean, I have taken pictures, but it's always nice to experiment as well uh, on uh, how you can apply the color, because that's... Uh, uh, how I use my sketchbook as well to do some uh, trials uh, to see uh, sometimes I want to apply a color first and then another layer on top and then see uh, if it conveys the color the way I want to. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's a way to experiment techniques as well. So it's uh, it's always nice to uh, to do this type of work. And here I'm just using uh, two brushes. I, I do like to you to do that. So I apply the color with one brush, and then I uh, sort of um, make a transition with a damp, clean brush. And there is a little bit of uh, reflection from the light. Um, I need to use a, a one of those artist lights uh, all the time because my studio is north facing which is quite good uh, because the light is always um, the same you know it's not changing during the day but sometimes depending on the season uh, it's uh, it's not very strong so and in here i'm applying first some uh, watercolor 
to the standard petal. Uh, but then after this, I will apply some uh, color pencil as well, just to have a little play uh, too. And uh, I do like to mix watercolor with color pencil. I normally don't do this on my final painting. Usually I do, I use just uh, watercolors, uh, but um, I might uh, uh, look into this technique a little bit more and, uh, and maybe use it in future. So here you can see I've, I've started with a color pencil and I'm using a faber uh, Polychromos. And then I think this is an old Bain um, uh, color pencil as well. I have just a few of these just to try. And these are my swatch cards. And if you have color pencil, but even with the watercolor, uh, it's nice to have this type of swatch cards so you can uh, uh, put, put the card near whatever it is that you want to, uh, to paint and you can find uh, the color that you, you're interested in. Of course, it won't be the exact match, but you can see if it's uh, you know, a starting point and then you can mix all the colors to get to the final color. So uh, I did this uh, a while ago, so I, I did all the swatches and then laminated the cards and then uh, uh, punched the hole and, and everything. But it was quite, uh, uh, quite fun to do as well. Although I do have the full 120 colors <laughs> set, so that was quite a long job. And uh, these are uh, some different uh, color swatch cards that I use uh, for the uh, Prismacolor. Um, so I have different ways of, of doing these cards, but it's the same principle. And with color pencil, you have to mix quite a few uh, colors to get uh, to, to your final one. And, uh, and you can't mix them before, of course, like you do with the watercolors. So it's a matter of layering these colors uh, quite a few times to get the right, uh, the right color. So it's a completely different uh, technique, really. And then here I'm just um, uh, painting the color for the uh, statements uh, because um, you can't really see them a lot in the flowers, but there are some of the flowers are open in my uh, sketch. And uh, I like to have an idea what the color of the statements is because uh, I won't be able to paint this while the flower is still, uh, you know, still good. It's going to be wilting soon. So I really need the color uh, the color recipe, you know, to know the, exactly what the color is uh, before the flower uh, ends. And uh, I do use a lot of uh, uh, things like uh, uh, the lenses, magnifying glass and, and all that, because um, it helps uh, to see better the structure and the color. And uh, here I'm also applying the color for the, uh, uh, for the ovary. So if you liked uh, uh, this video and uh, you want to check out my other videos, uh, just have a look at my channel uh, because there is a, an entire series of um, a botanical diary that I started in January and uh, hopefully I will be able to carry on <laughs> the, the rest of the year. I'm not sure how it's going to work out in summer uh, with my other uh, things to do, but uh, I will do my best. So I will... Uh, uh, carry on adding videos. So make sure you uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, feel free to share uh, the links uh, to the videos as well. And, uh, and of course, if you want to leave any comment, uh, again, just uh, feel free to leave me a, a comment and I'll try to answer as soon as I can.
and this is the uh, finished page, at least for now. I'll see you in the next video.